It's been a while since my last fight analysis, mostly because all of the fights I've seen recently have made me think, yeah, it was pretty good. But then there was Wednesday episode one, and I had some opinions. So full disclosure, I'm not sure if this is a fight analysis or more of an extended rant with some positives thrown in. You have been forewarned. Spoiler warning for episode one. The premise of the show is that Wednesday has been expelled from a bunch of schools, and so Gomez and Morticia send her to their old boarding school, Nevermore. Wednesday does not want to go to this boarding school, and she doesn't want to go to the mandated therapy sessions either. She wants to be herself. I'm smart, perceptive, and chronically misunderstood even by my parents, the most loving, accepting, and off-the-wall people in the universe. This has nothing to do with the fact that I was bullied as a child. I am perfectly rational, even under the influence of teenage hormones." And because reasons, she ends up challenging this young lady and her excellent contact lenses to a fencing match. Let's take it from the top of the scene. Wednesday, all in black, walks straight down the centre of the cell across all of the pieces, which is a really bad idea and also kind of rude. This is an echo of the opening scene where she walks down the school hallway, and also Wednesday metaphorically sits at right angles to the world anyway, so thematically this makes a lot of sense. Should she have walked around the side to avoid the teenagers who have slashy slashy weapons and limited peripheral vision? Yes. Would she have? Absolutely not. Side note on the topic of slashing, the subtitles say sound of foils clattering, but I'm pretty sure that everybody has a saber here. That's not relevant, but I just wanted to point it out. So we get about two thirds of the way down the cell and Bianca is fighting Rowan and he's all like, Coach, Coach, she tripped me. And my response to that is, not on screen she didn't, and the coach agrees with me. It was a clean strike, Rowan. Yeah, the coach is, we'll get to the coach, but we're setting up Bianca as Queen Bee. I mean, I was going to say designated mean girl, but tomato, tomato. Though to be fair, we don't have any particular reason for Wednesday to dislike Bianca other than her roommate saying, oh, she's the closest thing that Nevermore has to royalty. I think we're supposed to dislike her because she's mean to Rowan and that offends Wednesday's sense of justice, but we haven't really seen her do anything else to this point. Possibly it's just that Wednesday feels the need to outdo the closest thing Nevermore has to royalty to cement her status. I don't think that Wednesday would take kindly to my characterization of this as her attempting to assert her dominance. I definitely don't care about status, which is why I pick a fight with the highest status person in the school. But. I call it like I see it. Anyone else want to challenge me? So the main difference between Nevermore and actual schools or fencing clubs seems to be that at Nevermore you're allowed to be a complete... You know what, let me rephrase that. There are no consequences for being rude. The coach is right there. Why is he letting her be so rude? Look, I know that Nevermore is a kooky spooky school for kooky spooky types, but most people don't respond well to contemptuous disdain. Trust me on this Wednesday. Really. Trust me on this. That doesn't mean that Bianca shouldn't act like a jerk because, you know, teenagers, but somebody should maybe pull her up on it. Possibly. Anyone else want to challenge me? No, because that's not how fencing clubs work. No one is going to want to play with you if they think you're a jerk. I don't care how high your social status is, no one enjoys fencing people who think that they're better than everyone else. Unless you're pretty sure that you can beat the person who thinks that they're better than everyone else, because I imagine that would be very pettily satisfying. Which I think, to be fair, is what we're going for here. We can see that Bianca is a jerk, but we also see that Wednesday is uber confident that she can take her down a peg or two. So I would say we begin, and I promise we're going to begin soon, but they don't salute each other. We have this moment where they put their masks on in a meaningful way, but they don't salute each other and the coach says nothing. Is anyone going to enforce correct etiquette here? Anyone? No? Just me? Fine. So in my neck of the woods, fencing and longsword are on the same night of the week, so I had to choose and I chose longsword because it's very, very fun. So I haven't been fencing in a while, but I looked it up and in an official competition, if you refuse to salute your opponent, you can just be disqualified. Like, that's how seriously they take it. Now I understand that this is a school, this isn't a tournament, this isn't anything official, but like putting on your seatbelt when you get into the car, you just salute. You always salute. Don't you? And while I understand on a character level that they're contemptuous of each other, you could have turned them being forced to salute to each other into that character moment. If neither of them do it and then the coach has to remind them to do it and then they both do it extremely grudgingly, then I feel like that gives you a much better idea of how contemptuous they are of each other than them just putting their masks on in a meaningful way. But that might just be me. Although it does seem to accurately characterize the coach as someone who doesn't seem to care, but we'll get there. For this first section, they don't really seem to expect you to understand what's going on other than they fight. And while there are a fair number of cuts, they're quick, but they're not bewilderingly so. Side note, I'd like to take the opportunity to shout out the poor background extras, one of whom is advancing with his sword held vertically, not attacking at all, and the other one is retreating while attacking. Not really the usual way of doing things, but whatever. 
Where was I? Mostly for this section, we have some back and forth, we focus on close-ups, we have some close-ups of the blades, we have some close-ups of their feet, of their faces and their masks, and we also focus a lot on the reactions of the other fencers. Wow, look at these two doing the thing, and look how evenly matched they seem to be. Wednesday, after being nearly pushed off the piste by Bianca, scores the first point by ducking under Bianca's head slash and then doing this. Just stab her now, Wednesday. I love that. And I know at least one person who really seems to enjoy reposting like this, and honestly I love it because it looks so dramatic, but it mostly seems to work for them. I also thought that you had to reset to the on-guard lines after you scored a point in Sabre, but you know what, no one else seems to care about the rules, so why should I? And looking at it, I think they did this deliberately because the second point has Wednesday driving Bianca almost back to the other side of the piste, and they wouldn't have had that much room if they'd started on the on-guard lines. This point is shorter, Wednesday is much more aggressive, but she kind of overextends herself and Bianca wraps her very smartly on the head. Which also makes sense because Bianca is significantly taller than Wednesday, so good job. From a storytelling perspective, Bianca is overconfident and aggressive and loses the first point. And then Wednesday is overly aggressive and possibly overconfident and loses the second point. But then... For the final point, I would like to invoke a military challenge. And the coach is like... It's your decision, Bianca. Okay, what the Jeff kind of school is this? What the Jeff kind of fencing club is this? Sir, where did you get your coaching qualifications and have you ever heard of a risk assessment? Sorry, this is the reason that I can't watch films like School of Rock anymore without cringing just a little bit because it's a very charming movie, but I keep going through it going, Jack Black, why has no one checked your ID? Not one person? I mean, the 2000s were a different time. Although I suppose Nevermore is basically akin to Hogwarts, so maybe if you lose an eye when you're fencing, they can just fix that up for you, I don't know. But when I cast my mind back to Hogwarts, there were clearly rules in place and teachers did enforce discipline, generally speaking. They weren't the same rules as a regular school because Madame Pomfrey could fix anything up to but not including death, but still, rules were in place. But another point, <laughs> point about this is she says, no tips. Does she mean remove the safety tip? Because sabers, they, they don't have an extra safety tip, or not usually, and they don't remove any tips before they just start fighting each other. And saber tips are already, you know, bent over for safety anyway. Maybe when she says no tips, she means no stabby stabby, only slashy slashy. Anyway, the only things actually uncovered on their bodies are their faces, because no masks, and their off hands, so that's gonna be tricky. This isn't like Die Another Day, where the swords are sharp and it's first blood drawn from the torso. The only place that they can hit each other where they will actually be able to draw blood is the face. Maybe the lower legs if you've got rubbish socks on and you hit them quite hard? I don't know. It's not that you can't draw blood with the tip of a blunt saber, it's just that they are designed not to be able to cut through your mask or gloves or breeches or jacket or any of your other fencing gear. That's how we stay safe. From a storytelling perspective, this portion of the fight needs to look much more dramatic and dynamic than the previous portions. And it does. Though I will admit it's a little spinny for my taste. Mostly that's because they're allowed to move around each other instead of back and forth in a straight line now, but it's also because they can get their feet involved and push their opponent's sword away with their hands and all sorts of things that it is not okay to do in a normal fencing match. And generally speaking, I like it. You can definitely tell there has been a change of energy, as it were. And because they're not wearing masks, you can see the emotions on their faces, at least when their faces are in shot. But it also has a bunch of moves which are a bit weird for what they're trying to do, because stabbing someone in the clothed area with your fencing blade is going to make them uncomfortable, but it doesn't necessarily get you any closer to your goal of slashing them across the face. So there are these times where they aim for each other's legs, and I think, yes, that's going to sting, but I'm not sure how much it's going to help you tactically speaking. Maybe they're thinking the same thing I did, that socks aren't very protective, so if you hit them hard enough you might be able to draw blood through the socks. But to the fight choreographer's credit, most of the things they're aiming at are each other's faces. Which is precisely why this is so dangerous, which is precisely why I wonder why he is letting them do that. Sir, you are the adult here. These are children. Control your class. But anyway, there's pushing and kicking and an aerial and oop, ouch. In more ways than one. Tell me this, were you expecting Wednesday to lose? Because I hadn't really thought about it, but I don't think I was. But this being a series rather than a movie, we need to set up that Bianca is actual competition and so she needs to win at least some of the time, otherwise she just doesn't seem worth it. I'm very much enjoying the Wednesday series so far, though I'm only on episode three, and this is a very solid piece of visual storytelling and I like it, but I just can't get over the fact that the coach just stands there and lets them do this. Again, I get that Nevermore is a weirdo school for weirdo people and that's why Gomez and Morticia fitted in there, but this guy is apparently entirely apathetic to bullying right in front of his face and 
any concept of safeguarding. You don't have to be utterly draconian, though you might be draconic, who even knows? But you do have to enforce binaries. Be a little bit more McGonagall is what I'm saying here. I feel like he should not have been there for that final point. Like something happened so he had to take Rowan to the infirmary or something like that and he says nobody do anything till I come back but then Wednesday issues her military challenge and then she and Bianca fight and then Wednesday loses and then the coach comes back and is like whiskey tango foxtrot I said no fighty fighty. Unless this is a none too subtle hint that all of the teachers are actually just sadistic and evil which as I said they might be among the on episode three. I hope you enjoyed this video which had to come out on a Wednesday because Wednesday hence interrupting our current schedule but I will see you tomorrow for whatever episode of the fantasy heroine series we are up to and uh, I will see you for another long video probably after Christmas. And yes, you absolutely can get merch in my store which says just stab me now and yes, I'm very happy about that. You can also get merch which says other things. I realize that this would be a dangerous thing to wear in some places. See you soon.